Chemotherapy consists of a range of drugs that are given to try to uh, shrink cancer or to improve the outcome of people with cancer. Chemotherapy consists of drugs that are less specific in terms of their action against uh, this hormonal stimulation of prostate cancer and often kill cancer cells because they are dividing and growing. And they're used across a range of cancers and some drugs are used for different cancers, but we found by trial and error, if you like, that some drugs are better for treatment of prostate cancer and have a higher chance of shrinking the disease and prolonging survival of men with the disease. In men with prostate cancer, chemotherapy is used for men where the disease has spread to other parts of the body. We call that process metastasis. And the common sites of spread from the original growth in the prostate are to the bones, so a common symptom is pain from involvement of the bones, and to lymph nodes. It is uncommon for the disease to spread to other organs. Once it has spread to those those parts of the body, the first types of treatment are usually with trying to uh, inhibit the stimulation of the disease that come from male hormones like testosterone, hormonal treatments. Eventually, men will become resistant to those treatments. That's called castrate resistant prostate cancer. And for men who have symptoms or are expected soon to develop symptoms with castrate or hormone res resistant prostate cancer, that is where we usually use chemotherapy. Chemotherapy can be given reasonably safely. What it involves is usually treatment with a, an anti-cancer drug. The drugs for prostate cancer chemotherapy are usually given by vein and they're usually given in the outpatient clinic of a hospital or in some cases uh, in a doctor's office where he or she has the ability to deliver intravenous drugs. They are typically given once every three weeks, although there are some drugs that are given uh, weekly or on different schedules. The drug is given uh, through an intravenous and usually the man will also receive some added different drugs to control the side effects. Those drugs may be to control so that you don't have a reaction to chemotherapy. The commonest used drug for chemotherapy of prostate cancer is a drug called docetaxel. It's also known as taxotere. And fortunately, that's a drug that does, although it has side effects, it does not usually cause uh, any substantial amount of nausea or vomiting. The side effects that we worry about most are those that come from these drugs acting against dividing cells. So in a man with prostate cancer, his disease may be growing, progressing, because the prostate cancer cells are dividing and as they divide, they will make the sites of involvement get bigger. So the tumor is growing. Most of the drugs that are used in chemotherapy are active against cells that are dividing and they stop them dividing and they may then lead to the death of those prostate cancer cells. But they aren't entirely specific. And all of us have within our bodies cells that are dividing. And there are side effects against those tissues or organs in the body where we have dividing cells. One of the most obvious is hair growth. So the reason that, uh, that chemotherapy can cause baldness, and it's usually for a period of time, the hair comes back normally when the chemotherapy is stopped, is because it stops the growth of hair. And that is obviously unpleasant. It's not in any way dangerous to the patient that they have hair loss. There are within the body other sites where cells are dividing and the most critical is inside the bones, we call that the bone marrow, 
where cells are dividing to produce the cells that are in the blood. That includes the red cells that carry oxygen to the tissue, but that's the effect against those is not very great because they live a long time and so a transient interruption of producing them doesn't make in general people very anemic. The red cells don't go down very much. So that's not a big problem. But the white cells that guard you against infection, which circulate in your blood, they have a very short lifetime. So if you interrupt producing them, then the white cell count goes down. And we use a three week cycle of giving chemotherapy in general to allow the white cells to recover. In the middle of that period, the white cells can be down and that can lead to infection. And that's why we ask uh, patients, men with prostate cancer on chemotherapy, to be aware of that problem, uh, usually about between one and two weeks after treatment. It isn't common they get an infection, but if they do, we ask them to get medical attention. And the infection, if it occurs, tends to come from inside their bodies. We, we all have lots of uh, bacteria growing in, uh, in our gut, in our bowel, and infection can come from that. It doesn't usually come from other people. So you don't have to stop hugging your grandchildren, for example. I believe that in chemotherapy, we will have a better understanding of the uh, mechanisms that lead to resistance to treatment and probably in the longer rather than the shorter term will develop better treatments either for chemotherapy or for other drugs that are used with chemotherapy to improve the outcome for men with this disease.